Hi, everybody. Um, I'm here with, <laughs> with Sarah Kajawa. Um, and her, I again, I'm going to plug your Facebook group. Thank doing you. Grief Differently with Adam and Sarah. Uh, doing Grief Differently with Adam and Sarah. I said it again because you kind of, maybe, maybe they didn't hear the beginning when you said thank you. But yes, it's a great group um for all kinds of grief and we're going to talk about grief today <laughs> yes we're going to talk about good grief bad grief good. indifferent grief all levels of grief how's that all levels of grief and the thing about grief is you know you don't know what level someone's experiencing um there's all different kinds of grief there's the grief of grief is about loss so it could be a loss of the job a loss of a relationship a loss of some kind of security something that you've felt was a security in your life mm -hmm. and um I think that's happening a lot right now I feel like you know and I'm intuitive so I get I get very I mean I channel and it's well that you need to understand that that you're there on your own you need to understand this you need to so it's not necessarily that you're really losing something of your security but to really put you in your power, I think sometimes, but you go on with, with what you were oh saying. Gosh, yeah. about. No, but that's true. I think, well, a lot of, well, COVID's bringing up everyone's insecurities during this time too. Insecurities <laughs> of whatever it is, it's your job or your relationships, you know, everything that's coming to the surface surface is a fear that we can process and work through. And sometimes we have to process it again and again, you know, it's like chopped ham. It's got to be processed mul a multitude of times before it gets it to the market. I know that was silly, but whatever. I, that came no, no. <laughs> I go with it. <laughs> Better than liver worse, right? <laughs> um, so far as grief, everyone's journey through grief is differently. And I do know because I have dealt through many levels of grief with my son, Adam, passing in 2014. And most mm -hmm. of my family has already crossed over. So it's not just my son's death, it was also unresolved traumas and, and levels of hurts in my life and mm -hmm. other deaths in my life that maybe I still had some loose ends to deal with on some regrets or different other levels of grief. So when you're going through grief, you may think it's just one thing, but it can be many things that come up to the surface for you to kind of look at and to heal yourself by loving yourself through the process. It's a process. It's not a, just a one size fits all. It is, that's true, yes. And I mean, people handle grief differently and, and there are different levels for different things. And something that you think maybe is just, should be a small amount of grief may not be for someone, you know? And um, the thing about it is I think it's important to, for someone who's going through grief to know that someone's there for you. But at the same time, parallel to that is to understand that no one can go through it for you. So you, we need someone to talk to, we need the sounding board, but we also need to understand that this is, this is a journey on your own. This is a self-love. Self it sure is. Yeah. It's scary. It's very scary. It's very scary. And then we go through all those different stages, you know, the famous stages of grief. And then mm -hmm. I think there's like, even though there's traditional five and some people say seven, 10, 12, I think it's infinite because we can't categorize anything because it, you, you can't compare one person's to a journey to another person's you know, and then you're trying to dissect it and try to make it fit into the, your 3D reality. And it won't because no. there's something that's really has shaken you up, shaken you to awaken you to understand that there is more. And I just came from actually a celebration of life service. So it's just um, looking at your beliefs, your core beliefs about yourself, about uh, the society you live in and kind of picking and choosing what you want in your life. And then kind of tossing out, let recycle things that are no longer serving you. You don't know they're not long, no longer serving you because if they're still serving you at some level, they're going to stick around until you can process that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And 
You know, another thing, and, and I have a video, I'm going to link it in here, is another form of grief that I think a lot of people go through on the spiritual journey is the ego death. It's the, that is so, it's so difficult, especially if you've never had that level of grief before, but it's so empowering when you get to the other end of it, you know, it's so empowering. And I have a video on that and I'll just link it because it okay. gives some Good, advice on it. Yeah. Yeah, because that's really um, what it is. You're letting go of your old self, your I don't mm-hmm. want to say lower self, because then that you're kind of kind of like putting yourself, you know, on different pedestals. But you're letting go of how you think it should be based on what society says. Mm-hmm. You know? So really, you're being becoming more mindful and more present, uh, more loving of oneself, more self respectful, self compassionate, and in turn, if we if we work on I didn't understand this before, but if you really work on focusing on you, then it ripples out to everything else. Yes. And it's very hard until you're in it and you have a situation, then you can reflect back on it. And then you go, Oh, I kind of get it now. Mm -hmm. But you know what I mean? It's kind of like when you study, you learn, you listen to other people's teaching, but until you apply it to your own life, it's not going to stick. It's just still going to be out there. Yes. Like I thought mediumship, afterlife yeah it was for everyone else i believed it but it was out there it wasn't impacting my life yet so mm-hmm. i really had to if you want to call it the school of hard knocks you can call it you can call it that until you have that experience and, uh, and truly apply it to your own life so it becomes a knowing not just a belief a knowing so you don't question it anymore you just know yeah. in your bones you know in your gut absolutely absolutely so, and I think it's, it's kind of fitting that you went to, to, okay, what did you call it? I want to call it a funeral. So what did you call celebration it? Of life. Okay. Celebration of life. Yeah. That's because, the new coin phrase in the past several years, right? Celebration of life. I like it though. Yeah. I think it's a good, I think it's a good way to, uh, you know, I think you'll get a better turnout than saying funeral. <laughs> a good bang for your buck, right? <laughs> I can only um, say that just because I can feel Adam's presence laughing right along because I made that post about funeral potatoes potatoes you know the, yeah okay but he called he pronounced it funeral like it's fun or roll oh uh, at funeral <laughs> because I you mean, know we can add the sarcasm as much as we can because not that this life is a joke it's very hurtful and painful much of the time in this in this body but that when we reflect on it and see how far we've come and how far we've um changed Mm -hmm. you know and and dropped some of our ego to understand that first off it's not the world is not evolving around just us individually that we're here to help you know be compassionate towards one another and it has to you have to drop your ego suit and really not the whole suit but you know you got to understand that everything you say, do, and think impacts everyone around you. Mm-hmm. That is so true. And the funny thing, I don't know why this just popped into my head, but I'm going to say it anyway. It has nothing to do with grief. But when you, so when you work to sift through what your beliefs are and what you picked up and you make your own beliefs, you really notice things like, you know, people, society says that this is what age looks like and then if you decide you're not going to go that way this is how we live longer this is how we live healthy longer lives is really your mind is so powerful you know what I mean um Mm -hmm. and then you got to have you have a have to action behind it so it's not just the thought it's the action too so Mm -hmm. you have to reinforce your beliefs your new beliefs and a lot of times we joke about this all the time don't we Nanette you don't yes. know you're in a limited belief because you're in it and you're still working through it. So you don't know it's limiting. You don't realize that, that you're here and here's the ceiling and you're bumping your head, but you don't know it because you're still working through it. And then you yes. process, release, clear, get beyond it and see, and then you, the ceiling's up here and then you see more, there's more clarity. There's more space for clarity because yes. you're jumping into the field. And then before you know, it's a cathedral ceiling or it's a, it could be a skylight. You don't even know it. You've been walking around with this six foot ceiling and hitting your head all this time. 
Right. And a lot of times, I know this isn't a very popular 3D belief, but a lot of times grief is visited, visited upon us. Um, by those we love in whatever way, by their death, by their leaving, by their hurtful things, or even if they're not, that you just determine that it was hurtful or, or the changes are visited upon us so that we can grow, so that we can look beyond, you know, the little, the little square that we've been, the little square walls we've been living in. I'm, I can't think of the word I want to say. Cage, the little cage we've put ourselves in, you know? We don't even know. Because when I started opening up and then I called it a cave, right? So it was like, oh my God, I've been living in a cave my whole life. But it was serving me. I felt safe, comfortable. I knew everybody in it. I knew what was going to take place tomorrow or next Christmas. You know what I mean? It was that false sense of security, you know? And then mm-hmm. something com- comes along and, you know, saber tooth tiger, tiger attacks you or whatever. It changes everything and it shakes you to go, oh my gosh, there's so much more. Yeah, it helps you to face those fears and worries that you've concocted. Mm -hmm. Maybe something similar has happened to you or a loved one. And so you're bringing it up thinking it's going to happen again. We fall back to those old patterns. Um, So I do believe that it is when they say you need to go inside, you know, to heal. I, it took me the longest to get that, get that answer because everything we've been taught in society has been on the outside. You know, if you want your college degree, you got to do this. You got to, you know, someone's got to judge you and grade you all along, you know? Yeah, it does take a long time. Or go to confession. You got to get the priest. You got to tell you if you're worthy enough and what to do. Well, and and females, we notoriously, we have to tell people, we have to talk about things. And we do still kind of have to talk about things. But I find when I'm going inside, you know, sometimes I'll just go, I'll talk to my, or I'll yell at my angels or God, you know what I mean? I'll just punch I'll still, the wall. Yes, right. I'll still talk. <laughs> yeah. But, um, and then sometimes your friends still, if they, you know, the thing is about it, that you have to know who's really going to understand where you're coming from and, and just listen to you and say, okay, you know, that kind of thing, because we can't get the answer from outside of us the same way. No. Cause everyone's, you know, everyone's truth is different based on their experiences. Just, Mm -hmm. you can look in your inner family, even if you go with your, you know, a family event that took place two or three years ago, you can all get together and rehash it. It's all a little different. Everyone's version's a little, like you and I can watch the same, say, Forrest Gump, which is a classic, (laughs) and still get different things out of it. And go, I don't remember that part, you know? That's true. That's true. Yeah. Absolutely. So it's taking the approach and, uh, kind of having you know you not got to know how much room you have you got to create room a ceiling you got to raise that ceiling you got to raise the roof you yeah rise above it and then you're going to have these epiphanies aha uh-huh, moment moments of clarity peace and understanding and go oh now i see a different varying perspective a different view mm-hmm. and i'm not so closed-minded I'm not yeah. in a cave anymore. I didn't know I was in a cave because it felt safe Absolutely. and secure. And it's important. Mm-hmm. This is very important for empaths to understand this. Empaths, uh, you know, we tend to really want to be there for people or whatever. And you can, you can energetically kind of be there for someone in grief, but you can't carry the load for them. It's so important to understand it. You have to let them go inside and, you know... It, it's something that as an empath, you'll learn if, if you don't kind of get it right away, you'll learn, but um, you'll, you'll learn the hard way. Yeah. <laughs> you'll learn the hard way. And they go, I'm never going to do that again. And da, 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 da. You have to, for it to stick, you really, because we're, most of us are hard headed. I so know, really but you have to practice it and apply it because what it does. So I'm just going to maybe, maybe someone will learn from this. Um, and if you get drugged through someone's grief, you get drugged through, you're there for them. You know, you're there for them and you're going to end up as an empath being drugged through this. This is not your lesson. It's not your lesson. You have to find a way to have enough self-love 
to be able to energetically be there for someone, but not be dragged through um, their grief. It's not your grief. It's not your lesson. I mean, in the very rare circumstances, you know, that it's the same kind of thing. That's different. Like you're in the same situation or you're going through it together. That's different. But to be there for someone and it's not your situation, don't let yourself be drugged through it. You know, it's, it's right. not. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah, that's very true because we, misery likes company. <laughs> so sometimes we want to dr- drag our people through with us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? But, um, and then we're all still going to deal with it differently. But I do know when you're struck or in denial or shock with grief, you think the world should stop. You don't want anybody else to move forward. You want them to feel the pain you're feeling. Not yeah. maybe on the same level, but to understand and go, it's okay. But you can't understand why, you know, me looking out the door and getting the news after Adam passed and I see the neighbor kids playing in the yard. And it's like, I, I, you can't rationalize it. Why should they be playing in the yard? You know what I mean? When my son's not yeah, here Yeah, because you're still in the shock yeah. and denial. And, and then you bounce around in anger and bargaining and all kinds of things. And uh, Don't you people you know, know that don't we you need people, to stop right? Yes. <laughs> you know? No, and I felt that for a second when you were talking. I, I, you went back to it and I could feel it through you. That mm-hmm. Yeah, I get it. I totally get that. Yeah. So you do, you know, at first you do want people and then, but then you kind of, you kind of process when you process and whether it takes weeks, months, years, um, where you get out of the victim stage, you got to really mm-hmm. work through that. Cause if not, we don't, everybody on this planet would be walking around in a victim stage over something because we've all had crap happen to us. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. So once you kind of get out of the victim and take step into your power, raise the ceiling, raise your standards that you'll see that it's all working for you, not against you. And it's all happening for your highest and best good. Even if your ceiling is you're bumping on it and you're going, there's no way this would have happened. You know, I'm angry at God. I'm angry at this person. I'm angry at the world. I'm angry at my boss. We see it. We see it all over the news. What happens when people get angry, they're not processing Mm -hmm. their grief. Yep. They hurt, they, so they hurt others. They're sharing it. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Unfortunately. They're spreading it, yeah. So we're seeing, um, and now whether it's, it's because of COVID, that you know, mental health awareness is coming to the rise, or it's because social media, more people are on platforms now. I don't know. I can't say statistic-wise, but we're noticing that the mental health really is taking front seat on all levels, because it really stems back to that, no matter what's going on. Yeah. You know, oh yeah. Taking care of yourself, take it, checking on your neighbor, helping others when you can, like, but like you said, don't take it on. It's not yours to fix because it won't stick and they're going to have to go through it again. Yep. You can't take it on. You can't <laughs> like, do it. It's like, you know, helping your child on a social studies exam or whatever, you know, on just on a benchmark exam, they still got to take the final on it. So this, you know what I mean? This stuff. Well, and it's just, it's just like taking, it's like, um, okay, I have an example. My kids were pretty young when they had their first real bout of grief. It was over a very beloved pet that was, was killed outside, you know, and all, you know, you want to take it on as a parent. You do, but you got to understand that you can't. So you just kind of lay there and hold them or whatever, hold them, be there for them. But you, you have to find a way to step aside. And it's so hard when it's your child. It's so hard when it's your spouse, when it's, when it's your really good friend, anyone, you know, your family member, you want to you want help. To take it, yeah, you want to take yeah. the pain away. Because, mm-hmm. you know, when you're empathic, you just want to, it's like, it's all the cute videos that we see of a toddler's crying. And then another toddler comes over to console them and they start crying for no reason. <laughs> and I mean, you just... But, you know, um, <laughs> for clarity, so like if I'm doing private ses- sessions or like you, if you're when you're in private sessions, we have to stay in that higher dominant vibration for us to have clarity. Mm-hmm. Not that we don't want to come down, hug, cry, you know, be sympathetic, but we know that there is a much bigger purpose to the grief. Yes. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Because that's where we're at. We see the bigger purpose. Not that you don't. 
you know, real in it sometimes, but you don't stay there. You don't stay there. You pull yourself no. out. Yeah. Up and out. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, this is not exactly where I thought we would go, but I think it was pretty, <laughs> I like it. I like we didn't it. know where we were going to go. There we are. Just, we're rambling again. But we rambled into what? How to, how to use grief to your advantage, because that's the point. I think that's kind of the point, you know, I think, uh, I, yeah, everything is to your ad AD advantage. <laughs> of course, Adam. Advantage if you I was kind wondering of why I said that. I was wondering why I said advantage. I was like advantage. He's saying it's like you take Google earth, you know, and you're looking at something and then you can turn it, let's, let's turn it 90 degrees. You got to look at things in different perspectives and different views, because if you're very headstrong, I don't want to say closed minded, but you know, I mean, your beliefs are kind of closed. You're just going to keep, you're going to keep arguing with yourself or whomever is in your life over the fact that this has happened. And you'll, mm -hmm. it's getting to that acceptance stage that you can't change the past. You can rewrite it to your advantage so you can understand it. <laughs> yes. You can't do away with it. You got to use it as a stepping stone to climb higher. You, you have to. You might not even realize you are until you have moments of peace where you feel like you can sleep through the night or get through the, the day without having so many triggers. Then you'll mm -hmm. notice it. The more subtle changes. It's not like, oh, holy, I'm, I'm healed. You know, it's not like that. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> My miracle came. <laughs> it's not quite like that. And then even if you do have moments like that, chances are you're going to, come back up and down a few more times that's normal that's it normal. Is normal yeah yeah so it is it's but um there's always something else in there to understand where your emotions are stemming from because most of us were not raised to really understand our own emotions we just no. react yeah so we, you know so we have to kind of like retrain rewire where is this coming from oh i see that pattern I see that pattern yeah. is coming up. Now you still got to work with that pattern. You know, so you can't say, oh, it's gone forever now. It's not gone forever. It's still going to be there and come up. It just might not be the same energy pull on it. Yeah, it's the same heaviness, the same, yeah. yeah. Different, so. Absolutely. Um, so no matter what type of grief you're going through, whether you're just um, grieving your old way of life, Mm -hmm. that's grief too let alone it the is. death of a loved one or a pet um so you know there's people that have lost a lot of money in the stock market you're grieving that thinking oh yeah all. so there's a lot of things you know but you can connect it to other things in your life it's not just the usually the one thing you start seeing yeah. more and more things in your life oh and yeah come in that. So it kind of is like a thread of energy you can follow and you can journal about it. You can talk to friends about it. You can get a life coach or a grief counselor to help move it out of your energy body. So it's not like blocking yeah, your so some energy healing too. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah, it absolutely. might just be, you know, like a lot of times if you, well, you might have a pain here, but it might not be stemming from just here. It could be coming from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So it's really not that you have to diagnose and get to the exact root but you follow those threads of energy and whatever you follow your intuition, you'll know. Cause you just ask, just ask, you gotta ask for guidance and go, okay, there's part of it. Oh, and there's another part. And then, you know, a month later, Oh, there's that part again. It came back again. <laughs> it came back again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So accepting change. We're constantly in, in motion and in change it's just when you feel like you're not in control that's tough especially it's for tough. A big signs <laughs> it's tough so <laughs> then you feel like okay what can i do so i don't worry about it because if you've been a constant worry about the future or living in the past you're not even enjoying the present you don't yeah, even know what's going to, on. You know what I mean? Surrender. Then, yeah. Like, like tomorrow I could ask you, Nanette, what did we talk about yesterday in the video? I, I don't remember. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's kind of, <laughs> so it's being really present and just focusing on this task at hand. Mm -hmm. and it takes a practice. You know, it just does. like 
learning a new task at work or anything. You got to practice it. And so it just becomes a new way of life, a healthier way of life. I know. And one of the things that helped me with that was uh, to, to meditate when, because your mind will start trying to loop you back into your <laughs> yeah. egoic, uh, but we, we need yeah. this. It needs to go like that. It needs to get, so meditation kind of will cut that off. You just kind of, I mean, if you, if you have a hard time with that, you can just kind of concentrate on one thing, listen to the air conditioner, look at a light, whatever, mm -hmm. to kind of clear your mind. But that oh, is yeah. helpful. Candle gazing, yeah. um, sitting outside and just watching a tree branch, you know, mm -hmm. just watching the tree branch, branch, that's a form of meditation. Um, anything that will lower your cortisol, <laughs> bring you down the fight or flight to calm you down. You know, it's like when you mm -hmm. remember as a kid or raising our kids, they'd be crying so hard. They can't catch their breath. And you're just yeah. calm down, take some deep breaths, calm down, get back to center, mm -hmm. the center. When you're in, in center, you feel more of your true essence that you know that everything is going to be fine. It's then we mm -hmm. get worked up and we start talking really fast and short breath and, ah, da, 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 and then we're having anxiety <laughs> all over again. Yep. Absolutely. So it's just a um, mindful. Practice. So you can use, you can use the heart brain harmonization yeah. technique. I'll try to remember to put that, that one it. too. Yeah. yeah. So there's all, all different ways. Um, you can do guided meditate. You can do just walking in nature. Um, mm -hmm. oh, there's multitude. You got to figure out and then may change. You might get a pattern set. Oh, I really like doing this. And a month from now you may change or a month from now you might not need it. That's you right. might not need it. And then just becomes, oh, okay, gosh, I can't, I can't believe I'd sat down and I thought I'm going to go off and I want to go to another planet. My thoughts go, <laughs> go out of body. And you look, then you wake up and look at your watch and already 40 minutes have passed just like that. Mm -hmm. But other yeah. people, it's a control thing. No, I don't want to do that. A lot mm -hmm. of people are afraid. I've heard this before. They're afraid they're going to go out of body and not come back in the body. Yeah, good luck with that. I remember I've, I've spent that time concentrating on it, kick it out of the dang body. Good luck with that. So, I mean, yeah, you're not going to go, you're not going to yeah. untether it until you die. Okay. So, yeah, um, got a that's just a fear. It's a, it's a fear. Well, we're right. And think about it. All the astronaut movies where they're, you know, they get untethered and they're gone. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> but, um, so learn, if you get a fear, learn more about it. Look for teachings or understandings that support non-fear, <laughs> that support non-fear, because maybe that other spiritual teacher or their, their truth at that point, their ceiling is only eight foot tall and you're looking for the 10 foot tall ceiling, the bigger mm -hmm. view, yeah, the bigger teachings. Okay. The more expanded, the wider, the wider. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that because there isn't just one truth, you, and then as soon as you feel concrete in one truth, it expands into more. Then you go, Oh, that was so silly. I believe that. I can't believe I believe that. <laughs> How many times but you can't right? convince someone else because it's their truth? Yes, yes, and you shouldn't have to. I mean, you shouldn't it, have to. yeah, we don't have to, convince yeah, other and people I, I truly truth. believe, right? I, I, I a good person, a good teacher, a good spiritual instructor will lead you there, but you have to figure it out based on what you've been through. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we don't want to see a different version because we're still hurting over an experience we've had. We're not ready yeah. to see an other view of it. We're just not nope. ready to. So until <laughs> your energy body is ready, you know what I mean? It's like saying, yeah. I want to see that alien over there. I want to see that alien. Nope. Nope. I'm scared. You know, your body's saying, you're not ready. The Absolutely. alien's there, but you're not ready. But also, it's important to be gentle with yourself through your grief, to be patient and gentle with yourself, like you would do for others, and um, give yourself that kind of love. Yeah, because we just want it over. When you're hurting, we just want it yeah. over. I said that many a times, you know, even when I was in dark, dark places where I didn't want to live, I just wanted someone... And then you go through phases like someone just, I want, 
I just want a mugger to come up behind me and hit me over the head with a baseball bat. So I'm out for a month in coma. You know I mean? Thinking it's going to go away when I wake up. It doesn't go away. Yeah. It doesn't go away. No, no matter what you do. You know how we, I, I would think irrational things to, because it made me, I thought that was my path of least resistance. If I came up with some <laughs> irrational thing to make it go away for a while, you know? And that gave me like, I could just kind of calm down for a little bit. Or I'd pretend that Adam was on some, that he was, maybe he was in the military, you know, he's on secret mission. And that's why I had, like, you know, we play these silly games. Oh, yeah. We're grieving. We do. Mm-hmm. And then I come to find out that, you know, there really is no death. And then that's really just a big mind game. That is kind of a big mind game. It is it's mind funny because, yeah, because you find that you talk to them more when they tell. I remember when my dad died and like I could, he's just always around. Like, if, always hey, around. dad, in, in, your yeah. business, in your business. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And happy Father's Day to your dad then, by the way. Oh right. yeah, and and all the all the guys that are dads out there, happy mm-hmm. Father's Day, and all the dads maybe who've had a child that's crossed. That's right, happy Father's Day. Mm-hmm. So to Absolutely. know that you can continue your communication, even if you feel it's one sided, and it's just you're not getting that validation that you think you should be getting or that sign. Keep communicating because that's going to rewire you to open up yes. to raise that ceiling. Oh, let me share belief. something about okay. that Be- because you know I I, I kind of know something about that because I deal with people and they're like I why can't I hear my whatever or whatever. Well, here's the thing that I was told and it really stuck. Um, when 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 you get more when you get further through the grief when you get enough through the grief where you don't have such a need to have that person here in the 3D. Yeah, and that's when you start to hear. Am I right? right? Yes, they told me that's what I was. Yes, told. I, was like, I got yes. to the point because even when I was really communicating, really well, you know, I communicate with the angels and the saints and the masters at first because I had to feel worthy enough and safe enough to connect with Adam. Even though Adam was there, it was just my Catholic upbringing, whatever. Yeah, one of the beliefs, <laughs> the ceiling, right? Yeah. I wasn't the cathedral ceiling yet. I thought I was, but I wasn't. And um, I would like wake up every morning and I hurry up and want to talk to Adam because I want to make sure you're still there. So I had to keep reinforcing to make sure he wasn't going to leave me again. Because uh, see, I was still, even though I was fully commuting, communicating, I still had that trigger of that feeling of like, oh my God, he's gone. So I had to keep reinforcing it. And then as I got more stable and confident in my communication, then it wasn't, he's just merged with me. It wasn't, I just knew he was there. I didn't have to like, oh my gosh, is he around me? You right. Mean, but you didn't any longer need them. And you know, what's funny that you just triggered me with that because I, when people die, they come right to me. It's, you know, it happens to yeah. you. Uh, if, if they, if I know their people or whatever. And so this little girl died and I tried to talk to her mom and her mom was kind of like, eh. she had messages for her mom. And the, the little girl said, well, she's just, you know, she's afraid that she'll lose me again if she believes this. So that triggered that. Yeah, and yeah. I think that's common with parents it is that common. lose a child. Yeah. You know, even when I was in the stage of believing and opening up, cracking open, because I was so in, cer- in search of Adam, even though he was right there with me, but I was searching for him because I needed to have that 24-7 validation, not mm-hmm. just here and there. But I had other mentors tell me, oh, he's not going to be around long. He's just going through his process and review and then he'll be off. So I started believing these other beliefs that were very silly and limited now that I, you know, now that I'm in that place, but it created fear. So that's why I'd wake up in the morning and make sure he was there. You know what I mean? Or I've had people say to me, oh, they have to go do this first before. What do you mean? Because that person died and was right here. Every time someone dies, there I can talk to them right away. What do you mean? Because time isn't so the thing yes. is it's a very yeah, limiting yeah. thing, and time isn't real. 
kind of isn't real. So if the deceased person, if they really weren't able to go to 50 million different places at once, because we are that powerful, uh, and they had to do something, then the future then can come talk to me right now. Whatever. I mean, it's so limited. It's the higher self. Yeah. Yeah. It's very you know, limited. And that is one of the silly beliefs too, because, and you know this with other mediums or, um, and I went through this when I was communicating and then, you know, my husband was believing in all of it and he goes, Oh no, you got to quit bothering Adam. He's got other things to do. <laughs> and I go, oh my God, there's probably other people that think this too. That we're not, you know, we're omnipresent. It's no different than gajillions of people who pray to Jesus or Buddha or whatever. You know what I mean? So I thought, oh my gosh. See, everyone, when you're in a limited belief, you don't know you're in a limited belief. No, but I promise mm-hmm. you that I've found that anyone I want to talk to is there right away. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. yeah. So even yeah. if it's just one thing or if they want to have a a full-blown conversation or at least something, you know, unless the person has some emotion, sometimes there's some tied emotions around it where say it's um, a loved one who was not in a good place with, with the person who's still here. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes that can be a little tricky and someone else may come in instead or whatever. So you trust whatever comes through is what this person, the sitter needs. Yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Because they might have an expectation of, well, I'm only going to talk to my father if he apologizes or whatever. You know what I mean? <laughs> Something, oh, this another, you know, that's another one that changes the ceiling, right? Mm-hmm. So, oh, yeah. Only, in, really, there is no ceiling. But when we're in a body, we have a ceiling. We just got to keep rising, ascending. Yeah. And pushing that ceiling up. Keep pushing it up further and further. <laughs> it, that's how we it just keeps creating more and more so that we're eternal. Um, but yeah, kind of question your beliefs and then you, and you, 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 you might not even know it. You're just going to think this and say, you know, like people who have, they're really in a tunnel with their own religion. That's fine. But then they they don't realize that all their beliefs are tied around that one religion. Mm -hmm. So if you go to another part of the country or the world, it's different. And you're going, Oh, Oh, it's no different than, you know, how we eat in the United States. You can go to different parts of this country, totally different lifestyle, Mm -hmm. different, different restaurants. (laughs) It's totally different. It's totally different. The way we dress, the way we sound, totally different but yet we're all the same we're all the same but different so it's kind of like it's really a challenge to look at some of the differences versus what's the same also right you know absolutely um and like you you've had so many experiences and being in the military Mm -hmm. being a medium i mean that just says a lot right there (laughs) yeah Uh, and um but yeah you just got to be kind with yourself and breaking when we crack our heart open and it usually takes a catalyst some hurts to crack our heart oh first. yeah like ice pick like this that's what it feels like <laughs> uh and then it's a cracking open of your ego and Absolutely. those false beliefs that you've been carrying around that you didn't know you were like you've got like multiple coats on you don't know it you've got to take this coat off and take this coat off and it feels good with each coat you know yes we got to oh, have our yeah. ego but it's not more limited to use it as an advantage not a disadvantage that's right advantage i'm and going to name, so going back to the i'm gonna name AD. this with the big ad <laughs> yes well um i think that's it i think so too i think that was awesome i love you thank you oh, for I love doing you this and we love you all mm-hmm. bye-bye okay. have a great day uh-huh